G'day folks, it's Rob here and welcome to right down the back of our small little backyard farm. This week's vlog is a two-parter. We're looking at um, a little bit of work I did out the back here and some things we have growing on and a bit of a harvest we've been looking forward to for a while. And we're also going to nip on out the front, have a look at the Kajari melons, a few issues we've had with them, a couple of visitors we have in the patch out the front, and um, yeah, the ongoing tale of trying to grow corn in the wicking beds out there. After we're done with a little bit of a roundup around the patch, I'll come back and I'll announce the winners of the Crack the Max Nutcracker giveaway. Uh, it was a little bit of a giveaway, a sneaky one I held in a, a clip, a couple of clips back now, three or four clips ago. So stick around if you want to see who won that. For those folks who have been asking me as well uh, where they can buy root pouches and uni seals and that sort of things overseas, I am now a part of the Amazon Influencer Program. Thank you very much, Amazon. So I do have a page set up there, and there will be a link in the description down below so you can hop on over and um, have a look at some of the uni seals and the root pouches I've listed there, along with some testing equipment that I use as well. So it'll help you folks out. I've also become an affiliate for an Australian aquaponic and hydroponic store. So that will hopefully be live on the weekend. There'll be a link in the description below uh, just to the normal store page. And over the weekend, it'll swap over uh, to show the affiliate store page there as well. And of course, I'm still selling root pouches and uni seals and venturis myself here from our property. So there we go, a little bit of um, spruiking for myself. I do hope that you enjoy the clips coming up and I will catch you at the end. How's it going folks? A little bit of an update. Been doing some cleaning around up and mowing and all sorts of bits and pieces out the back here. Thought I'd show you um, your chilli mat. <laughs> this is the long uh, sweet pepper or capsicum or sweet chilli. It's got no heat to it apparently, not spicy. And it is now officially longer than the stem itself. And I'm thinking I'm going to let it stay on that angle till this one's ripened. And down there we've got a couple of bits of turmeric that I found. They must have dropped out of the um, root pouch when I brought the last big harvest up. And they've sprouted. So I found them down um, under a um, volunteer tomato down the back. Gave a few things a cut back like uh, this Okinawan spinach and also the Warrigal Greens in that barrel there. Over here, the bananas. We harvested the cass today. The, um, there was two or three of them starting to go yellow, so I'll be able to tell you what they taste like, Mark. Mark's got one of them uh, down behind his chook pen. So we'll be able to compare notes. Down in here, I've been harvesting, or harvesting, uh, pulling out a lot of weeds from the rocks, but leaving all my volunteers, like the Chinese amaranth, and the um, rabbit ear lettuce down there. And I noticed some more volunteers down in here. We have a Malabar spinach. I've um, no idea how that one popped up, unless some sort of bird decided to um, deposit a berry there. Uh, a lot of this mint has been hacked back quite regularly. We're using it in teas and that, but I think I need to um, give it a really good chop back. And yes, Mark and Maya, your mint is still there undivided. <laughs> um, thinned out a few bits and pieces in here. We took out, oh sorry, we, I took out the small ball capsicum that was in with that um, Cambodian ginger, whose name slips me for the time being. Uh, every single fruit was hit by the fruit fly. And we've got the other one that's doing rather well over in the veggie pot over there, so I figured, yeah, I might as well take it out. Down around the corner here, we've got some more Chinese amaranth, some more rabbit ear lettuce, and I noticed another Malabar spinach um, volunteer down there. And we've got some parsley over there. There was some um, amaranth as well, but I pulled it out. Um, not the Chinese stuff, the red leaf. Just over here, Bianca's um, succulents have decided to start, start flowering. So these guys do need to come out. Um, so yeah, hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll get to that by the end of the week. And the turmeric and gingers in here are doing so-so. This little one here is looking a little bit yellow. So not sure what's going on there. The other ones are, um, this one here was hit by a, a um, caterpillar. Uh, hopefully they'll bounce back nicely. The pH is pretty stable now at the moment. It's uh, fairly low. Uh, gingers like a fairly low pH, so that should be good enough. It's um, the only other thing I can think of is uh, maybe uh, not enough iron in there. So I will be dosing up again this week. I dosed up last week. Down here we have the coral lettuce, what we're calling the coral lettuce. Um, I spoke to Cameron the other day. I haven't forgotten you, mate. Um, there will be a seed giveaway for you third tier patrons, the Kajari melons, some of these guys once they're ready to come off, some rabbit ear lettuce and whatever else that I've collected from around the patch. Uh, the rest of the beds are looking all right. 
Hopefully we might get some seeds off this red celery. It's not looking too good. These little flower heads aren't anyway. So I'm sort of hoping these ones down here might do a little bit better. So I'm going to give you a bit of a look at the rest of the bed. Uh, that rabbit ear lettuce has been picked. I'm just picking bits and pieces from um, down low on the stems as we need them for salads and whatnot. And oh yeah, I did transplant out one of the sunshine chilies that was growing in a root pouch just into the black turmeric there. It has another nice large leaf on it. So there you go, just a little bit of a, um, a look at a few bits and pieces I did today. I've been working mainly on the website for the time being, trying to get the affiliate pages up and running. Um, I've been working on a lot of artwork for my own page, the Amazon Influencer tab, and also for the Aqua Gardening folks. I do hope you're all well and happy, and I will catch you a bit later on. How's it going, folks? Thought I'd give you a bit of an update on the Kajari melons out the front. We've got a little bit of a um, mildew issue on these guys. So I need to spray them with some, um, I'm thinking I might use some eco-fungicide or some potassium bicarbonate mix. Uh, what it does is it raises the pH and kills off the fungus um, or mildew. We've had a fair amount of wet weather recently and I have a feeling that that's helped this mildew um, take hold. It's not the normal uh, white powdery mildew we get on the other cucurbits. And just to show you, I just saw these down there. I dare say they're 28 spot ladybug um, eggs. So I'll come out and double check them tomorrow. I don't think they'll be the normal ladybugs because I haven't seen any aphids on here. Just quickly, I think these might actually be normal ladybug eggs because I've noticed a few of these little um, common ladybug larvae around the place. So there you go. Just thought I'd add that in just to let you guys know. One thing I noticed earlier while I was having a bit of a wander is we are starting to get the fruit flies strike some of the melons. They pretty much, well, the plant knows that there's something wrong and it goes a little bit manky and yellow. As you can see from this melon in there, um, once they get a little bit larger though, the skin toughens up and the fruit fly can't get their ovi depositor in there. Got another nice size one just inside there and a couple around the other side there too that are in bags. I did have a couple down the bottom here, but when I was out here with the um, line trimmer the other day, I've damaged them, so they're going to have to come off. Uh, another nice big one up here. <laughs> Look at it. It has a massive locust on it. So I will grab that locust off once I'm done so I can dispose of him properly. I'll be bagging the rest up from now on um, with these little paint strainer bags. So I've got a, a few more of them coming, so I'll use them. Uh, the 28 uh, spot ladybugs, they're pretty much well all gone. I came out over a period of um, three or four days and squished them. So hopefully those other ones aren't um, uh, those eggs. There is a little uh, ladybug larvae down there, but here's a black one. That one there's just a common ladybug larvae. So I'll let him go. There's another little melon down in there. I missed him the other day. So as long as we can um, get on top of this mildew issue, we should be in for a fairly decent harvest. I saw something in this bed here, but we'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, just over here, show you my corn. Well, the corn didn't really germinate. We got um, one here that came through, but that was pretty much well lit. A load of the red amaranth, uh, the big mother plant was growing in here, and a couple of the um, cherry tomatoes. Now, one thing I noticed, oh, you can sort of see down there, there's little divots and holes all through this bed, and there was a few more over here. I think the rain might have washed them down. But yeah, uh, we had rodents come through and take a lot of the corn. We did get um, this lot of corn here off. I actually got a nice harvest from um, those plants there. But when I was out here earlier, I was um, having a look for some Thai basil. And I've got a couple of little Thai basil plants just down in there. But what I noticed was a little pile of dirt. And then next to the little pile of dirt, a hole. So I have a feeling we have some rodents that have decided to make this bed home. And just down the back there, we have another little hole where I think they've dug in uh, to another nest. Or whether it's the same nest and they're slowly taking over my whole wicking bed here. But that is something I've never had happen in a bed before, that I'm aware of anyway. Oh, these um, rosellas, they're coming on all right, as long as I don't bend over their tips. They were supposed to have some bush beans put along the front here. But yeah, I didn't um, get around to doing that. And these bushes have grown out a little bit and the melons are taking over, so I might just leave it as is. But as far as the mice go, I think I'm going to have to try and trap them. I'll um, try a humane trap to begin with, just in case they're some of the natives. We do get a few native mice around here, 
and if it's the natives I'll release them in the um, uh, the park just around the corner there's a fair bit of bushland down there but if they're um, the um, pest domesticated mice or not domesticated but the um, feral mice that we get um, they might turn into compost activator just spotted a bit of grass in there very strange we get grass in here oh, and there's another little melon down in there so that's pretty sweet yeah but anyway enough of the mice I have noticed that we do have a couple of the little basil seedlings popping up hopefully they're the Thai basil because we've only got two decent plants and th those ones down there look like they're fairly smothered and I don't want to dig them out and disturb the rodents so with this bed here what I'll be doing is planting out a load of corn seedlings I buy from um, the local nursery I'll probably buy two to three punnets and plant them out here fairly dense uh, the bed's already been fed up but I will feed it up with a few other bits and pieces when the plants go in um, yeah so hopefully we'll have another corn crop soon I could sow out the seeds again in the bed but I think the rodents are just going to sniff them out and look after them or I could put them in punnets out the back but yeah just to save time I'm going to buy some seedlings so now on to the giveaway there were two models up for grab there was a new slimmer one that Nigel's been making that's fairly cheap to post around the world and there's the larger more traditional one for the Aussies uh, so the small slim one ended up being picked up by Micah over in Texas so congratulations Micah and the larger Australian one ended up going to Jeff here in Queensland who happens to be a patron as well so congratulations Jeff you probably may have even received your nutcracker today I got it out yesterday via express post so congratulations folks I hope you really do enjoy using them they're a fabulous little tool to use for everyone who hasn't seen the clip I'll put a link in the description below and you can check out the nutcracker itself and I'll also put Nigel's contact details down there too I don't receive any remuneration for spruiking Nigel I just think he's a top bloke and the nutcrackers are a fine little bit of kit to use just quickly I'd like to thank all the marvelous patrons over on Patreon who are continuing to support us with a small contribution every month in return they get um, access to little video clips and other posts that people don't generally see on social media or elsewhere uh, this weekend we've got a zoom hangout for you third tier and above patrons so that's on Sunday the 10th or Saturday the 9th um, and thank you John for um, letting me know that I had the date stuffed up so there you go I will pretty much well leave it there I do hope you're all well and happy and that you have enjoyed the clip and I will catch you next time cheers folks have a top one